This hurts my heart. This is Callie's first day in chicken behavioral rehab. So I've noticed a few things. Um, again, this is in regards to the alpha, who's the black one in the cage, beating up on the two brown chickens over on your far right, who had the Easter eggers and the newest ones to the flock. Um, again, not to the point where we were drawing blood or anything like that, but still it's like, guys, it's been two and a half weeks. Like, why are we still having these problems? So I locked up my alpha and I noticed a couple of things. The first thing was I locked her up last night and I, she acted really agitated and just uncharacteristically kind of afraid and, um, insecure, which Callie never acts like that. And it kind of hurt my heart a little bit because she doesn't okay girls because she doesn't understand you know why she's being locked up um, she does have plenty of food she does have water um, so she's okay but it hurt my heart last night and I had to remind myself why I'm doing this in the first place is because it hurt my heart that these two new girls were having such a difficult transition um, you know but I, I do have a heart for my birds and so I, I felt bad that Callie was really upset last night and was trying to communicate with the other hens who were locked up in the coop the other thing I've noticed is, now that the alpha is away, somebody else has got to step up. And I just threw some of, it's called Feather Fixer, and it's a higher concentrated protein, um, small pellet food. You can see some down there on the ground. And um, it's just because the, these three birds that you can see right now are all going through a molt. Um, Lacey is pretty much done, and Callie hasn't molted yet. Um, but this higher protein food is just better for their bodies. It helps them to, um, you know, to bounce back from the molt a little bit faster. But as you can see, there's still a little bit of, you know, just issues with the Easter eggers basically being chased away from the food. Now, I purposely spread things out. They've got a little bit of, like, raw squash as well. But I purposely will put some stuff, you know, in one zone and some stuff somewhere else so that there's a chance for everybody to get food. I really want these Easter eggers to get some of that, that feather fixer food. I'm watching my dog. There's a squirrel, like, taunting her, and she's so upset. There's a squirrel right up there barking at her, and my dog is just like, she wants that squirrel so bad. She only wants to play with it, though, right? Anyway, so it's been kind of interesting to see, like, oh, well, okay. I locked up the alpha, but there's still black team versus brown team as far as these two girls who are more veteran than those two girls still kind of doing the little food thing where, you know, if I don't want you right here, then I'll chase you away a little bit. So now Callie has everything that she needs. We shouldn't have any rain for the next few days until I let her out again, but I've got her covered just in case. But she does have a breeze going through. Like it's not hot out here. It's in the low 70s. So she's perfectly safe. But this is a very new experience for her. As you can see, she's still a little bit incredulous about the whole thing. But um, I'm wondering what's going to happen now. If she will remain the alpha when I let her back out. Today is Wednesday, so I locked her up on Tuesday night. I'm going to let her go on Friday morning. I think. Maybe tomorrow morning, but probably not. My Easter egg is here or something. What did I say? <laughs> that sound is coming from there's a squirrel up there who's barking I'm making that little sound but my easter eggers are like what is that hark so anyway I'm sorry this got ADD because I'm we've been gone all morning and I just came out to kind of hang out with the birds for a little bit so they're eating their feather fixer they do still have access to their regular layer crumble everybody has access to water 24 7 but I just want the easter eggers to feel a bit more at home not like they have to stay back in the corner and they're chased everywhere they go so Blue seems to be doing great. She's the one closer to you who's puffed up. Flopsy is in the back in the sunshine. She's a little bit lighter color. So they seem to be doing okay. These other hens, of course, are fine. Um, but it's just going to be kind of interesting, chicken psychology-wise, to see what happens to the pecking order. If somebody else is going to step up, if they're just kind of chill and they're waiting. Because, I mean, Calypso's not gone. She's close by. She just doesn't really have any control or any power. So I just I feel a little bit bad for her. Last night she was very very agitated very upset but I have to do this to try to make um, you know the pecking order a little bit more balanced there's such a huge discrepancy right now of you know these three being very much dominant and these two like you're okay unless we want something and then if we want something then we're gonna still chase you around 
And to an extent, it may... Oh my gosh, my stupid dog. And to an extent, it may always be that way with my chickens. I know there's always going to be a pecking order. Somebody will always be at the bottom, but hopefully we can close that gap a little bit. So, that's a dumb dog named Sadie Mae Somersault. That's a chicken. And that's a squirrel up there. Hey, hey. There's my Cali bird. I know it's bumpy. Let me get in here real quick. So it is now Thursday morning. She's been locked up since Tuesday night. So she spent two nights in there. You think you're rehabilitated yet? I'm hoping that she is because I want to let her out this morning. I'm going to let the other girls out first. Good morning. Hey, Blue. What's up, girl? You talking to me? They have the prettiest little voices, my little Easter eggers. Hey, girls. I know my focus is probably going to get kind of goofy here for a second as I try to do this with one hand, so forgive me. Good morning. But see, now my, my Easter eggers are just here integrating with the other two birds. Before, they would hide in the nesting box until I let the other ones out first. Like, they wouldn't even try to come out and down. And like they've been sitting out here waiting for me, like, where have you been? Where have you been? But the days are getting shorter. So it gets light later, and it gets dark earlier. Come on, girls. So we're going to let them out for a minute. Come here. Chick, 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 chick. Come on. Chick, chick, chick. Ah, free them. Good morning, birds. It is barely 60 degrees here in North Texas, or South Texas, excuse me. I used to live in North Texas. It's barely 60 degrees here and I'm freezing, it's so cold. Oh, morning poop. Everybody's gotta do one, right? Ooh. So what do you think, hmm? You think you're gonna behave? She has laid eggs while she's been in there. She's slept, just so you kind of have an idea. I have, you know, most of this covered. The whole top is covered, and she's off the ground with those cinder blocks. So, um, and of course, since I put her in here, we haven't had any rain, of course, right? Now, <laughs> when you actually prepare for it, you don't have any. Um, but Hurricane Michael actually just touched down yesterday, so I'm sure we're going to be getting some crazy rain in the next few days. Hey. She did sleep in that far back corner, which may just be coincidence, but it may also be like that's the most covered, that's the darkest corner. What do you think? Should we let out your sister? So she's been in there for, um, you know, she went in Tuesday night. So she was in Tuesday night, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. So she's really only been in there for one day. So... And this is kind of like, you know, everybody just says for a few days, there's not an exact formula. So now that I think about it, I was thinking she had been in there for two days already, but she hasn't. She's only been in there for one day. And I had to put her food, and of course she's knocked it over, so I'll fill it up. But I had to put her food in the middle because if I put it in the edge, all the other birds are like, ooh, yay. Especially Lacey, you can see her snack patrol. But see, now the Easter eggers are, oh, they're able to be out. They could do what they want. There's still a little bit of spats sometimes, and they'll always be the bottom of the pecking order. And maybe if we had integrated everybody at the same time, they wouldn't be. You know, it's, again, going to chicken psychology. Like, I, I don't know. But the way the situation is, my little brown girls, my Easter eggers, they'll probably always be the bottom of the pecking order. But, like, everybody still should have access to water. <clears throat> Everybody still should be able to come under the coop and get dry if it starts to rain. <clears throat> so just kind of trying to close the, the social gap here. So actually, I think I am going to leave her in for another day. Maybe I'll let her out tonight. Um, but I don't feel like just one day is enough time. But already, like, I'm so happy. The Easter eggers are getting closer to her. They're not walking around like they're scared. Like, they're just coming out and just exploring and just doing chicken stuff. And that's what I wanted for them. Hey, girls. Hey, hey. Blue, the one who had Bumblefoot, is the darker one who's on your left, who has the, um, her molting is worse. But see, she's a lot darker. Flopsy is closer to you, and she's a lot lighter. She's the one who's just super scared, bottom of the pecking order. Blue, I actually wondered if I locked Callie up for longer, if Blue might move higher up in the pecking order. Because she's intelligent, she's calmer. She's the one who's had the Bumblefoot issues. Cheek, cheek, cheek. Okay, so what we'll do is I'm going to leave Callie in here for another full day. Um, I may let her out tonight. If so, I'll do a video then. I may let her out tomorrow morning. If so, I'll do a video then. Just a quick update here at bedtime. It's getting dark, so this is going to be short. You can hear the clicking of the Mexican free tail bats around here. So, um, 
Calypso is still in quarantine. Um, she's been in there not quite 48 hours. She is definitely still agitated, wants to be with her sisters, but she is sleeping in there in the far back corner at night. She has laid an egg both days, which I kind of feel bad. So it's been almost exactly 48 hours. Um, I'm just, I've, I filled up the chicken water. I brought them another mirror from the dollar store. Oh, sorry, I need to fix that. Sorry, I forgot to put the rouge back. So Lacey's trying to do some tightrope work over here. So that back corner is where she's gonna go to sleep. So I apologize, it's not lighter. Um, but Callie is back there. I'm trying to see if this helps you see her at all. Not that it really matters. I mean, it's a chicken in a cage. You know, it, it is what it is. But she's going to bed. And she's very upset. She, you know, she wants to go up. She wants to get higher off the ground. Um, I didn't bother giving her a roost in there. Now that I've learned everything that I've learned about chicken sleep. So she's going to find a spot to lay down. Um, there is still a little bit of bickering going on. I know the lighting is weird. I have the flash on my camera. So, um... But there is a little bit of bickering going on. But I mean, to me, the size of their run, even though I would love for it to be bigger, it's plenty of room for four or five chickens. So while I know, like I've said before, to reiterate, I know there's always going to be, to an extent, a pecking order. There will always be somebody who's on the top and somebody who's on the middle and someone who's on the bottom. And I don't expect that whole status to completely change. I'm getting a little drink of water before we go to bed. But I'm hoping that, like I've been saying, I can just close the gap a little bit so that it's not the same one bird picking on the same two birds, because that's not fair. And the poor Easter Eggers, they've had such a crazy transition, such a different a different life experience than they had before. Poor Lacey, she's trying to figure out how to get up there with the, the roost bar that I left down. I'm gonna put it back up in just a minute. Oh, 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 she figured it out. There she goes. So, Calypso has been in there since Tuesday night at dark. You know, when she got sleepy, I grabbed her and put her in there. It is now, what is today? Thursday night. So, like I said, 48 hours. I am going to let her out in the morning. Everybody's getting one more drink. I am going to let her out in the morning. And I will sit out here for a little while just to kind of see how the interactions change. Do the other girls start pecking at her? Like, hey, you're not the alpha anymore. You know, there was a usurper while you were in the crate or whatever the case may be. But as you can see, she's she's trying to get into the into the coop, which hurts my heart a little bit. I'm sorry, big girl. But she'll calm down in a minute and she'll go to bed. I think she's just more agitated because I'm here actually. It is Friday morning. And oh jeez. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Can we all just get along? Alright. Good morning, Bird. Thanks, girls. So here's the plan. Calypso has officially been pardoned, we think. We think. Right, girls? So what I'm going to do, this is our normal, you know, let, let all the birds out, check their food, water, clean, poop, all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these girls out first. And then in a minute, I'm going to let out Callie. Now, she's been in there for about 56 hours, I guess. Come on, chicken. Come on. So she's been in there for three nights. And obviously she's very agitated. So I'm going to let these birds kind of relax for a minute first. And just get their good morning stretches. Ah, flapping wings. All that good stuff. Hey, Calypso. Hey, girl. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. It's so funny when I when I open them up in the morning and let them out, they usually like run all the way straight to the other end of the yard. I've got a couple things to move around here this morning. I'm going to move the pallet and make a little zone right where my Easter eggers are over there, those brown birds over to your left. I'm going to make a little hideaway zone over there. It's like a little covered area with this pallet that I've got. But... You solemnly swear to be a nice bird. Hmm. 
Okay. So now what I'm going to do. Come on. Tick, tick, tick. Come on. Tick, tick. Come on. Come on, Kai. Tick, tick, tick. All right, big girl. <laughs> You're like, hey. Lacey's like, my turn. <laughs> what are you doing, Lacey Bird? I think Lacey's just like, hey, lock me in here because then I get my own food. <laughs> I don't have to share with anybody. <laughs> I'll sleep in here. I don't care. I get my own food. Oh, and here's Gracie. This is so cute, guys. Look. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna drink your water. Yeah. That's okay, baby. My daughter's playing with snail shells. So I'm gonna hang out for a minute to see if she goes over there towards the Easter Eggers. Hopefully she won't. There they are. Blue, the one who had the bumblefoot, who's my buddy. She's the one up on the grazing box. Flopsy's the one who's goofing around back there. <laughs> Poor Blue, she hopped down off the, I don't know if you saw, off the the outdoor roost bar here on the coop and I opened the door to let her out and <laughs> she jumped down to the ground and like five feathers flew off of her like <laughs> she's still molting poor bird poor bird everybody's back together I wonder if psychologically it would be smart for me to leave this crate here for a few days it's like as a silent threat Oh, oh. See, they're still wary of her, but she didn't do anything. Oh, Callie Bird. I love you too, honey. You know, you're a. Here. <laughs> Look at that little tail wag. Happy bird. We're all safe, Flopsy. She doesn't normally like deliberately come to me, so that's good. I hope they know that everything I'm doing is because I care about them. Wouldn't spend another forty dollars at tractor supply yesterday. Oh my god! It's like I won't buy myself new underwear, or I won't buy myself like a coffee. So I'll go drop forty dollars on stupid chicken. I will remind you. I've said this in other videos. Eggs are not that expensive, y'all. We could just buy them from the store. Why don't we have these birds? Well, I'm glad everybody's just having a nice quiet morning. Where'd Lacey go? She's back over here. So what I am gonna do is I'll get rid of this tarp for right now just so I can see through that space. And then I'm just gonna do my morning chicken chores and kind of keep an eye out. So this was a bullying hen quarantine for three nights and two full days I guess all of a Wednesday and all of a Thursday now it's Friday morning and she's out so what's gonna be interesting for me to see a couple things I'm watching let's see let's watch their interaction I feel like we're on the Discovery Channel which is what I watch when I'm on the treadmill, by the way. <laughs> I run to, like, David Attenborough. But anyway, um, what's going to be interesting is, will Callie still be the alpha? I don't really feel like one hen definitely took her place while she was locked up. I mean, I saw, like, Lacey likes to be food dominant because, I mean, she's, she's a big old bird. And Dottie was too, my other, my original wine dose. Those wine dose, they just, they love their food, they love their snacks. But other than that, I mean, she's really easy going, really chill. You can see her goofing around back there. Mm -hmm. 
other than that, I mean, she's real laid back. She's like, as long as I can get to my food that I want, I don't, I don't really care. So she's real chill. Gracie is sassy, but Gracie's also a lot smaller. She dramatically drinks with one foot up on the ball. Ooh, bird. I love watching chickens drink. If you've never seen a chicken drink, it's like the cutest thing ever. And of course, now that I said that, she's not going to do it anymore. So, I don't think anybody, like, it's not, oh, 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 they got a bug, they got a bug, they got a bug. They're both chasing a live bug over there. So, I don't feel like one hen is definitely like, oh, yeah, this is the one who stepped up. Um, so, we'll just see what, what, the, what the flock dictates when the flock has spoken. Um, but the other thing is, I know, you know, there's always going to be a pecking order. It's not going to be all five of my children are equal and they're all, you know, it's not ever going to happen. So the Easter Eggers, I'm sure, will always be the bottom of the pecking order. Unless I add more new birds at some point, And then maybe they, they shift up by default. But, um, you know, hopefully we've kind of closed that gap a little bit. So there's not as big of a discrepancy. The Easter Eggers aren't always the ones who are chased away from the water or the food. They're not always left out in the rain, literally. <clears throat> that was kind of like the, the final straw for me. Like these poor birds who are molting and everything. And Callie wouldn't even let them like go anywhere inside the coop to get out of the rain. So, I'm just going to watch and see how this interaction works. But see, in the morning, it's not like, you know, everybody decides at the same time, oh, we're thirsty, or everybody decides at the same time, oh, I need to lay an egg. The morning is kind of like everybody just gets their stretches out, has a nice morning poop, you know. <laughs> I didn't mean to catch that, sorry. And Gracie's still in the crate, if you can hear her. I'll pan over to her in a second. So, it's not quite mid-October, um, just some random other updates if you'd like to keep watching. Um, Hurricane Michael has hit Florida, and I'm so sorry for everybody who's affected if you're watching this during the fact or after the fact. I hope you are okay. I hope your livelihood and everything is okay. And I know... We are supposed to get rain. Today is Friday. We're supposed to get rain this weekend, which really sucks because it's going to be my daughter's birthday party, which we always have our parties outside. Oh, my birds together again. But we are going to be getting more rain and the temperature is going to drop like crazy. Um, I will do a video at some point this season about keeping your chickens warm, but just kind of spoiler alert. You don't really need to worry that much. Chickens survive perfectly fine in like feet of snow. Um, what is it, girl? Look at the beard on Blue. Look at her beard. Isn't it magnificent? Blue, you're going to be such a pretty bird. Especially when you get your all your feathers back. I love that bird so much. Flopsy. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, girl. Blue is the one who's still looking at us. He's on your, on your left. He's the one who had the bumblefoot and everything. Look at her. And you can see the pins of her feathers, um, like on her back and on her beard. Oh, Callie. See, here we go. 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 Back in the crate, girl. I'm not putting up with that crap anymore. Oh, poor birds. So I'm going to move that pallet around. Now I'm just kind of randomly talking, so don't feel like you have to keep watching or anything. So don't worry about your birds getting too cold. I mean, it can happen, but you hear about chickens overheating a lot more than you hear about chickens, you know, freezing or something happening like that. As the days get shorter and the weather gets colder, your birds will either slow down laying or stop laying, and that happens exponentially the older that they get. So these birds are, uh, hey, Gracie bird, not quite a year and a half old, uh, probably about a year and a half. Look, now see, Callie doesn't mind Gracie being right there. But their laying will slow down as their body goes into, you know, bare minimum mode. What's priority? Priority is not that they give us eggs. So it may shut down. Um, it may slow down. It may shut down completely. Um, I'm hoping that it just slows. Because if I'm dropping, you know, 40 bucks at Tractor Supply and I have to buy my own eggs, <laughs> I'm going to register a complaint. Where's my girls? Um, since the weather has gotten colder and I've got, you know, blue recovering from bumblefoot and stuff like that, I have started putting apple cider vinegar in their water. 
you want to get the raw stuff, not the crap that Tractor Supply was trying to sell, which made me mad. Um, there's a brand called Braggs, B-R-A-G-G-S, and it's got, it's basically just unfiltered apple cider vinegar. Um, to the chicken, supposedly it tastes almost sweet. They like the taste, but you can add one tablespoon per gallon of their water. Now you could do that all year round if you want to. Um, just here in Texas, they're kind of like, you don't really need to until it gets cold. It's another boost that you can do. I'm going to be giving the girls raw garlic a couple of times a week. Just um, as the weather starts to change, you know, people, we all start getting sick. So just doing some preventative measures. And like I said, I'll do a cold weather video, but um, if you, I guess the disclaimer kind of is if you've got breeds wherever you live, if you've got, excuse me, if you got chicken breeds that are good for your climate, for your area. So like the chickens that are sold here in Texas are from New Mexico. And so they're from, they're for like, you know, the Southern United States. Um, they're all good hardy breeds that aren't super sensitive to heat or things like that. Although I might disagree with wine dotes. I think they kind of are, um, a little bit more sensitive, but I mean, she doesn't look sensitive, does she? <laughs> so, um, but if you, you know, if you live, I don't know, in Wyoming, then hopefully the chickens that are sold around you are breeds that are appropriate for Wyoming. If you live in Canada, then hopefully the breeds that are around you are native to Canada or they are compatible with the type of weather you'd be experiencing. Um, the things real quick you want to remember about, about chickens is that they, they can change their body temperature most quickly through their feet and legs because, you know, that's directly their skin and their blood is right underneath that. Um, so look at my birds. Good girls. Oh, my sweet Easter eggers. My poor girls. My birds. Blue is the one who is closest to you that you can see her full body. She's darker and muffier or more bearded. And she has a, a small comb. Flopsy is called Flopsy because her comb flops over to the side. Good girls. Good girls, Titi. So I think I'm um, going back to the cold weather thing. I think. I mean, maybe if a chicken is standing out in a foot of snow for a while, then that might start to be a problem. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a zone where they can go and get out of the wet snow, where they can be, where they can be dry. But any kind of chicken who has the traditional feathers, like you know, she's a black sex link. There's a Wyandotte and a barred rock in there. Those are Easter eggers. Any chicken who has like normal feathers, they're not a frizzle, which are the ones that like you know loop out like an Nancy Drew style, um, and they're not silkies because those chickens cannot control their body temperature as well. But any type of normal chicken who has normal feathers. Hey, Blue, come on, girl. You my girl, Blue. How you doing, honey? Those types of chickens can control their body temperature a lot better. So you just wanna make sure that they're not staying in the cold and wet. Chick chicks. But like I said, I'll do a cold weather video. Um, I honestly, other than batting down the hatches a little bit more, like kind of literally, right? Um, making sure that there's um, that perfect balance of there has to be ventilation in the coop but you also don't want to have like a ton of, of holes where like the north wind can go through um, but that's it I don't do heaters I don't do any ridiculous stuff like that I've made my girls hey baby Whoop, cheek, cheek. There goes blue. I make my girls hot oatmeal that's just the long way oats not the quick oats and obviously no flavor or anything in it with hot water <laughs> she, she wants to feed them mm. <laughs> and I put raw garlic in it so it's it's plain oats and water and raw garlic garlic oatmeal goes great with coffee um, but other than that and like apple cider vinegar and you know keeping that built up so that ground in there doesn't get wet so at least they can go in there and be dry I mean other than that I'm not gonna do anything our chickens um, if you saw the video the elusive Texas snow chicken um, when my chickens were out in the full yard last year we don't really get a lot of snow until January or February if we get anything um, but my chickens were out in the snow and they were like whoa what's this stuff okay cool whatever let's go look for bugs and they were fine So that got really random and off on a tangent I apologize but if you're still watching which nobody probably is so I'm just talking to myself so we'll see how this integration goes if it looks like there's another problem or I need to lock somebody up then I'll do it again somebody is always going to be the alpha so you can't just lock up the top oh you brought him some stuff oh thank you 
Looks like Callie's happy to be back. Come on, stick. She says thank you. There's more. Oh, they're coming over to my little girl. What is it, girls? It's okay. She doesn't mean to hurt you, remember? But that's what she does. They peck. He just bites my finger. She pecked you a little bit, but she's not trying to hurt you. So now this is super random. But let me know what you think about what's going on here. We're getting really distracted. I apologize. <laughs> um, so again, someone's always going to be the alpha. It's up to you to kind of determine what pecking order behavior you feel is appropriate and what you feel is not. I just needed to give the Easter eggers a little bit of a break. So hopefully that did its job. The crate's going to stay here for a day or two just to be sure. But now I'm going to start moving a couple of things around and then we got to get ready for a birthday party tomorrow. So I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. Again, more content will be coming soon.